Hello there, I'm Gav. If you're sensitive to flickering imagery, I'd give this video a miss because it's horrendous. <laughs> Over the past couple of decades of filming hundreds of subjects in slow-mo, I've become most fascinated with the stuff that sits right in front of our eyes, yet is a total lie. And a great example of that I've found is all of the different types of displays that we spend our lives staring at. There have been many different types of displays used over the years that look relatively similar to the human eye, but using the power of super slow-mo, we can see that they all work in incredibly different ways. In previous videos, I've shown you that LCD, plasma, and OLED displays use raster scanning, where they basically have a grid of pixels which is progressively scanned from top to bottom. Each line shoots across the screen from left to right, and it quickly builds the frame from top to bottom to the point where you can see the entire completed frame, even in slow-mo. This works very similarly to a CRT screen, which uses an electron gun that steers across the screen, building the image line by line all the way down to the bottom before starting again on the next frame. And there's a short blanking interval where the beam can move without drawing anything on the screen. If it needs to start a new line or if it needs to reset back to the top for the next frame. The way a CRT differs from a modern display is that there's no complete image left on the screen. You're really only dealing with that one area where the electron beam is currently hitting the phosphors on the front of the screen. It's just your persistence of vision. Your brain completes the image just because it can't see quick enough to see that there's only just a small dot lit up. If you ever take a photo of a CRT TV, it's very unlikely you'll end up with a complete image just because the decay is so fast, you'll end up with a partial image based on the duration of the exposure on your photo. So that leads us to the next step in our journey through fascinating display technologies. This thing, I feel like Tecmoan, but without the Mancunian charm. This is Tempest, a 1981 arcade game that I'm terrible at that uses vector graphics. This is still a CRT display, hence the flickering you're seeing on the screen right now. But the way it draws each frame is completely different. This was known as Atari's Color Quadrascan Vector Display. There were other games at the time that used vector graphics, such as Asteroids, which typically was just one color. This was capable of multiple colors, the electron beam is basically allowed to arbitrarily move all around the screen, drawing lines between different coordinates. It could control the color and it could control the brightness. So if it set its brightness to zero, it was able to move and start in a new area of the screen without drawing the line. And there's actually little hints on the screen where you can see because it's quite an old game. It's not really capable of dimming all the way down. So you can kind of see little trails where the beam has moved from one place to the other. Similarly to all the other displays that we look at, this happens way too fast for our eyes to see. So why don't we show this thing in all of its glory by whipping out a very fast phantom and shooting it at absurd frame rates. I'll start off by shooting at 28,500 frames a second on the V2511, kindly provided by Destin. This is what it looks like at a thousand. As you can see, I definitely needed a faster camera for this one. Here we are at 28,500 frames a second. The game isn't drawn from the top to the bottom or in any specific area first. There are just different passes made for different elements of the game. I'm not gonna play that clip again, but in post, I'm gonna hold the brightest points of the clip. This is effectively what our eyes and brain end up with when looking at it in real life. That entire frame was completed in just 18 milliseconds. So as you can see, it starts with the score, then draws in the lives, a little bit more text at the top, then it starts working on the walls of the course. Then the yellow lines signify where your little blaster is currently situated. Then it does the back opening, the front opening, followed by you. Then it starts doing all of the particles and enemies and shots and explosions inside the map. To give the illusion of a much bigger shape or a filled in shape, it can just keep drawing lines over the same spot. But in reality, the entire screen is made up of lines and dots. After all that, it starts working on the next frame, where chances are a lot of the elements on the screen are now in a different place. Here are some glimpses at some other games. This is Battlezone, which I showed earlier, and also 
and this one is Star Wars. All the gameplay and all the text once again made up of only lines. While I was at this arcade I thought it'd be interesting to show multiple machines next to each other. You can see here the Smash TV and the Super Mario Brothers machines both drawing their images from top to bottom regardless of gameplay elements. And then you've got Tempest in the middle just drawing whatever it feels like. <laughs> To the eye, unless you already know about these two different technologies, I think it's very difficult to tell which displays machines are using. The chances are, if it's just line art, it's vector. And vector maybe looks slightly more flickery to the eye, especially when there's lots of lines being included in the same frame of gameplay. There are definitely pros and cons to this type of display. The upsides are, the graphics look incredibly crisp and high resolution, especially for the time. And it's not a crushed looking sprite trying to fit into a small grid as it scaled up and down and rotated and stuff like that. And the main downside of these displays is that anything on them is just hollow shapes and lines. It's not possible to fill in any of the shapes with solid colors or anything like that. So there is that limitation. Well, there we have it. Hopefully you found that footage as fascinating as I did. I'm always just so intrigued to learn about how old technology worked, especially when you need a high speed camera to see it. It's just insane when you think about it really. <laughs> if you think you know someone who might enjoy this video, feel free to send it to them. Make sure you subscribe. And now I'm going to pass it over to me to talk about Simply Safe. Take it away, me. Thanks, me. Simply Safe is currently in the middle of their big holiday deal with 40% or more off. Let me tell you a little bit about their service. Simply Safe is an immensely customizable security system, allowing you to design a system with the best fit for your place straight to your door. There are sensors to cover every window, room and door, as well as HD cameras for indoors and outdoors. The ultra wide 140 degree field of view really hits that sweet spot for coverage around your property. Once all that is in place, your home is professionally monitored 24 seven by Simply Safe's team. I've relied pretty heavily on security systems in my past. I think it's incredibly important for everyone to have something in place. But not only that, it can also come in very handy if you start spontaneously pranking your friend and you don't have time to set up a regular camera. What? I just dropped that. I was just walking along and I just dropped that. If you haven't seen the video where I pranked Dan, give it a watch after this. It's a good one. One of my favorite aspects of the Simply Safe system is that everything is under the same ecosystem. So you're not worrying about a camera from one company, a door lock from another. Everything is controlled by the base station. Everything communicates very well with everything else. And because of that, it's incredibly simple to set everything up. It's very fast. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, you can save 40% or more by going to simplysafe.com slash slow-mo guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.